Hello everyone. Welcome to today's video on time and work. I'm Suraj Chavla and I'm the CEO and founder of Apex. I'm a BCom graduate and I did my MBA from Xavier Institute of Management Bhubaneswar in the year 2011. And I went on to work with ICICI Bank after that and worked for one and a half years and also handled a portfolio of 400 plus crores. It's been more than 10 years I've been actively engaged in trading and mentoring students for CAT. I've trained 10,000 plus students for CAT so far from various backgrounds like BCom, EA, DTEC, BSc, as well as agriculture students. A lot of my students have made it to the top 30 B schools in India, including the IIM Ahmedabad, Bangalore, Calcutta, and other top IIMs. Now, in order to train my students effectively and also understand the patterns of the examination, I made it a practice to write CAT every year and I've been consistently scoring 99 plus percentile in the QA and LRDI section of CAT. So what's in today's video? In today's video, I've brought in the concepts of time and work. Along with that, I've also brought in for you the last five years questions segregated concept wise. So what we will do in today's video is we'll learn the concepts. Along with the concepts, I'll also tell you the tips and tricks to solve the CAT questions effectively and also master them as well as to make them easy and score within the time limit. So why is this topic very important? Now this topic becomes very important as you can see in the table that almost in every slot since 2017, we have been seeing minimum one question coming up from this topic. And more importantly, this topic is a very small topic. Like if you give good five to six hours, you should be able to master this topic and grab at least three marks in the examination for yourself. So let's get started. So what are we dealing in this topic? In this topic, we're majorly talking about three different terms. Okay, one is total work, which is generally not given to us in this topic. Okay, that is why this topic is called time and work, right? Because work is not given to us. We are given something in an indirect manner in terms of number of days. So most of the times we are given number of days in the question. Now number of days can be in the form of days or it can be in the form of hours or sometimes it can also be in the form of minutes. Right, so we are given time taken in short which is in the form of number of days, hours or minutes. And from there, some conditions are given to us and then we are supposed to calculate the amount of time taken to complete the same work, right? So therefore, one will be assuming our total work, we'll discuss in the coming slides. So basically, we're dealing with three different terms here. One is your total work. Second is your the time taken, that is number of days or hours or uh, minutes. And connecting both of them, we also calculate the rate or efficiency or the speed with which the person is completing the work. So we should understand the relationship that the rate or efficiency is nothing but total work divided by total number of days. Right, when I cross multiply, number of days is nothing but total work by efficiency. Similarly, total work is nothing but number of days into efficiency. Now let's try to understand with a simple example. Now suppose I am given that I have to completely eat 40 chocolates. Okay, 40 chocolates, that means I am giving you total work is 40 chocolates and I have to eat in 5 days. So if I divide 40 by 5, which is a commonsensical point, that means I have to eat 8 chocolates per day to finish the work on time. So we have to assume that the person's efficiency remains consistent throughout the time period. Unless specified in the question, in certain questions, we will be told that efficiency is changing. So we'll come down to that. But let's understand what is efficiency. The rate at which I am working is 8 chocolates per day. And how did I get that? That is total work upon total number of days. Now similarly, suppose I tell you that in this reverse direction, I have 40 chocolates to eat and I have been eating 8 chocolates per day. So what do I get? I divide 40 by 8 and I can clearly comment that the number of days taken is 5 days. Right? Or the other way around, let's say I'm eating for 8 days and I'm eating 5 chocolates per day. So 8 days, 5 chocolates per day, then we can also comment that the total work is going to be 40 chocolates. So this is how we understand the relationship between the efficiency, the total work and the number of days, right? Now let's move to the next slide. Now, what are the points to remember in the basic model? As I told you, the total work will not be given to us. So we will assume our total work to be LCM of the number of days given to us. And always remember, our target should always be rate or efficiency to solve the question. So this should be our main focus. Somehow, we have to come down to our rate or efficiency and see that we are solving our total work. Clear? Now, let's understand the basic question with a simple example, okay? 
So we have A, B, C can do a piece of work in 10 days, 15 days and 30 days respectively. In how many days can A, B, C complete the work working together? Now, what am I given? I am given that three people are working, that is A, B and C. And I am also told that they are working together. So let me write A plus B plus C. Now what I follow is, I follow a small model which is called number of days, efficiency and it results to total work. So I am given that number of days is 10. 15 and 30. So what is the first point here? As I told you, first point is we will assume the total work to be LCM of whatever is given in terms of number of days. So if I talk about the LCM of 10, 15 and 30, we know that the LCM is going to be 30. So I am defining that the total work is 30 units. Now if A does 30 units in 10 days, it's obvious A will do 3 units per day. So we can also understand n into r is total work. So if you want to fill the table faster, 15 into 2 is equal to 30 and 30 into 1 is equal to 30. That means c can do 1 unit per day, b can do 2 units per day and a can do 3 units per day. Now the question is saying that they are working together and as I told you, the second point is always that our target to solve the questions should always be the rate or efficiency. Right? So, I add the efficiency here, 3 plus 2 plus 1, that means together they are able to complete 6 units per day. Now, 6 into how much is equal to 30? I know that they will be taking 5 days to complete the work or in short, we know that number of days is total work divided by efficiency. So, 30 by 6 will give you 5. Right? So, this is the format that I will that'll be following for the rest of the chapter and then we will see how do we solve the questions with the help of this format and get our required answers. Right? Now let's look at one of the questions in CAT 2022 slot 3. Now we are told that Amar, Akbar and Anthony are working on a project. So let me write three people are working. So I have Amar, Akbar and Anthony. Okay. Working together, Amar and Akbar can complete a piece of work in one year. So let me write Amar as AM plus Akbar as AK. Now Amar and Akbar can complete the work in one year. So let me write 12 months. Similarly, I am told that Akbar plus Anthony, that is AK plus AN, can complete the same work in 16 months and I am told that Anthony plus Amar can complete the same work in 2 years that is 24 months. Now this is the number of days given to us. Now our job is to calculate the efficiency but before that as we discussed our first job is to take the LCM of number of days. So 12, 16 and 24 the LCM becomes 48 units. That means Amar and Akbar together will do 4 per day. Akbar and Antony will do 3 per day. And an, uh, Antony and Amar will do 2 per day. Because 24 into 2 is 48, 16 into 3 is 48 and 12 into 4 is 48. Or you can divide them also 48 by 12, 48 by 16 and 48 by 2. Now when I am given A plus B, let's say this is A plus B. And I am given let's say B plus C. And I am given C plus A. Whenever I am given A plus B plus B plus C plus C plus A, when we add them, we always get 2 times of A plus B plus C. Now 2 times of A plus B plus C is equal to 9. Now I don't want 2 times of A plus B plus C. So rather let's calculate only 1 time of A plus B plus C. So if 2 times of A plus B plus C is equal to 9, so 1 time of A plus B plus C becomes 9 divided by 2, which is going to be how much guys? 4.5. So let me write this as 4.5. Okay. So that means Amar, Akbar and Antony, if they are working together, they can complete the work in 4.5 days. Now what is asked in the question? I am told the person who is neither the fastest nor the slowest takes how many months to complete the work. Now let's understand. That means I want individual uh, efficiency here. Amar, Akbar and Antony. Now if I have Amar plus Akbar plus Antony is 4.5, from there, if I remove Amar plus Akbar, then I get 0 0.5 is for Antony. Similarly, from Amar plus Akbar plus Antony, if I remove Amar plus Akbar plus Antony, I get Amar. So, 4.5 minus 3 will give me 1.5 and 4.5 minus 2 will give me 2.5. So, this guy is clearly the fastest. This guy is clearly the slowest. That means I want to know in how many days or in how many months will Amar alone complete the work and number of days is nothing but total work divided by efficiency. Efficiency is 1.5. I can write 15 by 10. So this is 5 3s are, this is 5 2s are. 
this is three ones are three sixteens are so sixteen into two will give me how many days guys so thirty two months sorry so Amar alone can complete the work in thirty two months as per the given question so not a difficult deal at all guys this question can be solved very easily with the help of the standard basic model all we need to know is a plus b plus b plus c plus c plus a is always going to be two times of a plus b plus c now let's look at another question so i'm told that anil can do a job in 20 days so let me write anil here anil can do a job in 20 days this is number of days given to us and sunil can do the same job in 40 days and then some conditions are there right since i'm given only anil and sunil let's continue from here and let's calculate our total work to be LCM of 20 and 40. What is LCM of 20 and 40? That is 40 units. So 20 into 2 is 40 and 40 by 40 is 1. Clear? Now I'm told that Anil starts the job and after 3 days Sunil joins him. Okay. So let's make a small time log here guys. Very interesting question this is. Now for the first 3 days, it's Anil who is working alone. Now, Anil completes two units of work per day. So, total work done in three days is going to be three into two. That is six units. Clear? Now, after three days, Sunil joins him. And again, after few more days, Bimal joins him. So, let me assume that Anil plus Sunil are working for X days. In one day, Anil plus Sunil, two plus one completes three units. So, in X days, they will complete three X units. Right now, after X days, Bimal joins. I do not know the efficiency of Bimal. Let me assume the efficiency of Bimal is B. So now A plus B plus S are working. I do not know for how many days, but they complete the job. Let me assume that Y days. So these guys have been working for 3 plus B is the efficiency, and they have been working for 5 days. Now, this is where my total work is over. Now, let me rewrite this 3 into 2 is 6 plus. 3x units plus 3y units plus b into y units. So, this is the work done by Bimal. Clear? Now, this total part should be equal to 40 units because this is the total work that we have assumed. Now, what is the extra information given? Bimal has done 10% of the job. Now, I repeat, b into y is the total work done by Bimal and 10% of 40 is going to be how much guys? 10% is 1 by 10. So, 1 by 10 of 40 is going to be 4 units. That means B into Y is equal to 4 units. So, I can rewrite this as 6 into 3 times of X plus Y plus 4 is equal to 40. Or we get 3 times of X plus Y is equal to 40 minus 10 that is equal to 30. Or we get X plus Y is equal to 3 ones are and 3 tens are. That means we get X plus Y is equal to 10. In how many days is the job done? The job is done in 3 plus x plus y. And we know that x plus y is equal to 10. So, the total job is done is 3 plus 10. That is 13 days is the total number of days in which the job is done. And therefore, the answer here becomes option A. Clear okay, guys, let's move to the next question. Now, the next model that we are looking at here is alternate days model. So, the previous questions were from basic model. Now we are looking at alternate days model. I brought in two simple basic questions for us to understand alternate days model. Now in alternate days model there are two models here. One model where I need not know the total the, who is starting the work. This is that model. Okay. I need not know who is starting the work. What is the condition? Let's try to understand. A can complete a work in 20 days. B can complete the work in 30 days. Now let me assume my total work as an LCM of 20 and 30. So, total work here becomes 60. So, 60 by 20 is 3. 60 by 30 is 2. So, their efficiency together is 5. Now, remember guys, 60 is exactly divisible by 5. Whenever total work is exactly divisible by efficiency, I need not know who starts the work. Let's take an example. If A is starting the work, okay, the work will be done by A, B, First day A, second day B, again third day A, fourth day B. So, every odd number day, the guy who is starting the work will come. And every even number of day, the second guy will come. Now, for our convenience sake, what we can do is, this block is of two days and the work done is five units. 
similarly if you understand a b a b a b as blocks each week club we know that we will get 12 such blocks now since 5 divides 60 exactly we will get equal number of blocks so i can say that 5 units of work is done in 2 days so 60 units of work since they are exactly divisible 5 into 12 the total number of days taken will be 24 days if a starts the work now please remember even if b starts the work i will still take 24 days because if b starts the work i would write ba 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 and so on even now in a block five units are being done and in two days so similarly if you observe we will need 12 such blocks and 12 such blocks will be in 24 days so remember if total work is exactly divisible by total efficiency is exactly divisible by total efficiency i need not know who starts the work right now let's take this case for example in this case it's very important for us to know who starts the work and let's understand how do we answer these kind of questions okay so a can do a piece of work in 10 days and b can do the same work in 20 days now let's take lcm here 10 and 20 the lcm is 20 so this is 2 and this is 1 now if you observe my total efficiency does not divide my total work so how do i solve this the easier way to solve is we take a multiple of 3 less than 20 what is the multiple of 3 less than 20 18 so 3 units of work is done in 2 days because first day A works and B works and so on so on so on. So 18 units of work that is into 6 will be done in into 6 that is 12 days. Till here doesn't matter if A starts or B starts 18 units will be done in 12 days. Now remember the guy who is starting the work comes on the odd number day. So when it's the 13th day if A is starting the work A would come. A will complete 2 units and if A is starting the work then 20 units is completed in how many days? 13 days. I repeat this is if A starts the work. Similarly, if B starts the work, okay, if B starts the work, 3 units of work is done in 2 days. Similarly, 3 into 6 that is 18 units of work is done in 12 days. Now, 13th day, it will be B's turn. So, B will complete one unit and he will go away. Clear? So, now the work is not done in 13 days. So, 18 units of work is, sorry, 19 units of work is done in 13 days. Clear? So, it will be A's turn now. Now, A has to do only one unit of work, whereas A can do two units of work per day. So, A will complete one unit of work in half day. So, if B is starting the work, then 20 units of work will be done in 13 and a half days. Clear guys? So, this is where the difference occurs. But what is the standard way to approach? The standard way to approach is, we take a multiple of total efficiency less than our total work. And from there, what do we do is we start breaking them down and then we calculate. So, always remember every odd number day is the day of the person who is starting the work. And every even number day is the day who is coming to the next part. And that is how we need to solve. Now, a few questions in CAT have come from this model. Let's solve them. So, this is again a question from CAT 22 slot 3. Anu, Vinu and Manu can complete a work in 15, 12 and 20 days. Okay, so let me write Anu, Vinu and Manu. So, my total number of days given are 15, 12 and 20. Now, how do you take LCM easily, guys? Now, always remember the easier way to take an LCM is look at the largest number and start taking multiples of largest number. Like 20 into 1 is 20. 20 is not divisible by 12. Neither is it a multiple of 15. I want a common multiple. So, 22 is 40. 40 is neither divisible by 12 nor divisible by 15. But 23 is 60. 60 is a multiple of 12 and 60 is also a multiple of 15. So we can write 60 by 15 that is 4. 60 by 12 that is 5. And 60 by 20 that is 3. So we get their efficiencies also. Now what is given to us? Vinu works every day. Anu works on alternate days. Starting from the first day. So first day it's Vinu and Anu. 
Now Manu works on alternate days from second day. So second day it's again Vinu plus Manu. So this is the so now I need to understand that this whole block will repeat. So first day V A V M, V A second day V M. Then again third day we will have V A. Fourth day we will have V M. So please understand each block is important to us. So V plus A will complete nine units on day one. And V plus M will complete 8 units on day 2. That means what can I conclude here? My conclusion will be 17 units of work is done in 2 days. Now 60 is not exactly divisible by 17. So we take a multiple of 17 close to 60. So a multiple of 17 close to 60 is 51. So 17 threes are 51 units will be done in 6 days. Now every odd number day is the day of the person who is coming on day 1. So the next day V plus A will come and they will together complete 9 units. So therefore a total of 60 units is completed in 7 days and then the work will get over. And that's what the question is asking you. Find the number of days to complete the work. So the number of days to complete the work here becomes 7. So this is a simple approach whenever we are given questions on alternate days model. Okay guys, now let's look at the next question. Now, the next question here is, Bob can finish a work in 40 days. Okay, so let us write Bob can finish the work in 40 days. So I have Alex, Bob and Cole. Okay, so let's write all the three of them. So we have Alex, we have Bob and we have Cole. So Bob can complete the work in 40 days. This is what we have. The next part of the question is talking about uh, Alex is twice as fast as Bob and thrice as fast as Cole. Now since I am not given anything else, let me assume, let me hold because I have to assume the efficiency. Now Alex is twice as fast as Bob. So if I assume Bob as 1, Alex becomes 2. But Alex is also thrice as fast as Cole. So what we can do is, right, thrice as fast as Cole. So better part is I assume this as 2. So this part becomes 6. And Alex is twice as fast as Bob. So Bob becomes 3. So if you have to assume the efficiencies very smartly. Clear? So 6 is to 3 is to 2 becomes the ratio of their efficiencies. Right? If you want, you can take 6k, 3k, 2k here. No problem. So let's take 6k. 3k and 2k. So my total work becomes defined as n into r. So I define my total work as 120k units. Clear? I repeat Alex is twice as fast as Bob which is justifying and Alex is thrice as fast as Cole. So this is a very smart work that you have to do. Now suppose Alex and Bob work on day 1. So day 1 is AB. Bob and Cole work on day 2. So day 2 it is BC. And then Cole and Alex work on day 3. So Cole and Alex is AC. This is repeated. Three day roster with Alex Bob working on four day and so on, so on, so on. That means this becomes one block. So what is A plus B? A plus B becomes 9. 6 plus 3 that is 9. What is B plus C? B plus C is 5. What is A plus C? A plus C is uh, 6 plus 2 that is 8. So 9 plus 8 is 17. 17 plus 5. Clear? That is 22. So what can I conclude is I can conclude that 22 units of work is done in 3 days. Clear? Right? So one part is 3 days. Now in these 3 days, remember, Alex is working for 2 days, Bob is also working for 2 days and Cole is also working for 2 days. This is what the question is asking you. Find the total number of days Alex would have worked when the job is finished. First let's finish the job. So since what 22 does not divide 120, we take a multiple of 22 close to 120. So 22 into 5 is 110 units of work is done in 3 into 5. That is 15 days. In these 15 days, Alex would have worked for 2 into 5. That is 10 days. And since the question is asking about Alex, let's write only Alex. Okay. Now next day, again Alex and Bob will come. AB will come on next day and they will together complete 6 units. Sorry, Alex plus Bob is 9 units. 
So k is not important here. If you want, you can assume k. This is 110k, this is 22k and so on, so on, so on. So what do I see? After 16 days also, 119 units is done. So one more day of work will be done. But this day, b and c will work. And they will complete the work. Right? So by this time, the work is getting completed. And how many days has Alex been working for? That is 10 plus 1. So Alex has worked for a total of 11 days when the work has been completed. So this becomes our final answer of this question. Clear guys? So let's move to the next question please. Now, the next model that we are looking at is the basic remuneration plus the basic model plus the remuneration model. That means some money is involved. Okay? Some money is definitely involved in the whole process. Right? So, now, if all the people are working for same number of days, then the money is to be divided in the ratio of their efficiencies. So let's say all of them started together, all of them completed together. Then we can divide their money in the ratio of their efficiencies. Okay. Now, point number two. If they are not working for same number or number of days, let's say for some days A worked, then again B came in, then again after some days again A came back. So, if they are not working for same number of days, right, then we have to calculate the total work done by each, each one of them that is equal to N into R. And we will divide the money in that ratio. Right, so two simple models. Are they working for same number of days or are they working for different number of days? I repeat, if they are working for same number of days, then the total money will be divided in the ratio of their efficiency. If they are working for different number of days, then the total work will be divided in the ratio of the total work done by them. Right, now let's look at this question. Amal can do a work in 10 days. Bimal can complete the job in 8 days. Now Amal, Bimal and Kamal together Okay, A plus B plus K can together complete the job in 4 days. So 10, 8 and 4, the LCM becomes 40. So this is 4, this is 5 and this becomes 10. Now this calculation should be done very faster. Either you do N into R as total work or you can do total work by number of days is equal to this. Now 4 plus 5 plus what should be equal to 10? As I told you, our target should always be efficiency. So 4 plus 5 plus 1. Now, in this question, if you observe, all of them are working for same number of days. If all of them are working for same number of days, then the 1000 rupees of remuneration will be divided in the ratio of their efficiencies. 4 is to 5 is to 1. Now, what is Kamal's share? Now, the Kamal's share is pretty simple. 1 divided by 4 plus 5 plus 1, that is 10, into I am dividing 1000 rupees. So, 10 ones are 10 hundreds are. So, 1 into 100, therefore, 100 rupees becomes the final answer. Okay, guys. So, therefore, option A becomes a final answer in this case. Now, let's look at another question here. Now, Anil can paint a house in 12 days, whereas Barun can paint a house in 16 days. Okay. So, I have Anil, I have Barun. Sorry, Anil 12, Barun 16. Okay. And I'm not given anything about uh, the third guy. There's a Chandu also. But I'm told that Anil, Barun plus Chandu. Can together complete painting the work in six days. So 12, 16, and 6. So 16, 3 is 48, and 48 is divisible by all of them. So 12, 4 is 16, 3 is 6, 8 is now 4 plus 3 plus what is equal to 8, and this part is equal to 1. I repeat, target efficiency. Now all of them work, are working for same number of days, right? That means the money will be divided in the ratio of their efficiencies. And I'm asked, if Chandu is paid according to the proportion of work done by him, then find the amount that he receives. So, Chandu will get 1 by 4 plus 3 plus 1 into 24,000. 4 plus 3 plus 1 is 8. This is 8 ones are 8 three thousands, right? So, therefore, this guy will be paid a total of 3,000 rupees. That becomes the final answer. Clear? Now, let's move to the next question. Now, another question on uh, money which is divided. Now, Anil can paint a house in 60 days. Okay. So, Anil can paint a house in 60 days. Vimal can paint the same house in 84 days. Anil starts the work and uh, Vimal and Charu join him. So, there is a third person called Charu. 
Now, when numbers are large, how do we calculate the LCM? Let's try to understand. Since we have done the chapter on numbers also, let's first divide 60 and 20, 84 are divisible by 12. This is 12 fives are 12 sevens are clear. That means 12 into 5 into 7 becomes our LCM. That is 12 fives are 60, 60 into 7 is equal to 420. Now understand this is already 12 into 7. 12 into 7 into 5 will give me 12 into 5 into 7. This is 12 into 5. So this part will become 7. Now I'm told Anil starts painting for 10 days. Okay. Bimal and Charu join them. Together they are able to complete the painting in 14 more days. That means they are not working for same number of days. Now what is happening here? So Anil is working for how many days? 10 plus 14. So Anil is working for 24 days. So the total work done by him is 24 into 7. Clear? What is 24 into 7? 7 is 140. 140 and uh, 7 to 7 4 is 28. That is 168. Now Bimal is only working for 14 days. So Bimal does 14 into 5. Clear? 14 into 5 is going to be 70. Now Charu is doing the rest of the work. Let's say that is X. Okay? And they are completing the work. So I know that 168 plus 70 plus X is equal to 420 because that is the total work done. So 168 plus 70 is going to be 238 plus X is equal to 420 or the value of X is equal to 420 minus 238. So 238 plus 2 is 240, 240 plus 80 is uh, 320, 320 plus 100 is 420. So therefore, the value of x becomes 182. Clear? Now I am dividing 21,000. So 21,000 is the ratio of work done. So Charu has done 182 out of 480, sorry, 420 into 21,000. So this is 21 into 1000 and this is 21 into 20. 0 and 0 again gets cancelled and this is 2 ones or 2 90 ones. Are. So 91 into 100. That means Charu gets a total of 9100 rupees and that is going to be our final answer. So you see guys, if they are not working for same number of days, we have to do an additional calculation where we need to check what is the total work done by each one of them and accordingly give our final answers in the whole process. Okay guys. Let's move to the next question now please. Now, the next model we are looking at is efficiency. Now, sometimes if the question is not talking about total number of days or I am given the ratio of total number of days, right? Or sometimes where the LCM is not possible, we use the efficiency model. Okay, so, we assume the efficiency. Let's say I assume the efficiency of A as A units per day or A units per hour or A units per minute and then we calculate. Okay. And the second most important point we need to understand is efficiency is always inversely proportional to total number of days that we are talking about. Clear? Now, let's get started here. Now, working alone, Anu, Tanu and Manu can complete a job in any job or in the ratio of 5 is to 8 is to 10. So, I am given the ratio of time taken. Ratio of time taken by Anu, Tanu and Manu is equal to 5 is to 8 is to 10. So, the ratio of efficiency will be inversely proportional. So, the ratio of efficiency becomes 1 by 5, 1 by 8 and 1 by 10. I repeat, efficiency is inversely proportional to total number of days. Now, this becomes the ratio of fractions. So, you would have learnt in the ratios chapter how to simplify the fractions. So, we take the LCM of denominator 5, 8 and 10, the LCM is 40. So, I multiply each term with 40 into 40 into 40 into 40. So, this ratio becomes 8 is to 5 is to 4. Okay guys, so this is what we have. So, 8 is to 5 is to 4 is the ratio of their efficiency. Now, they all accept a job and finish the work in 4 days. Now, let me just erase this part. 8 is to 5 is to 4. Let's keep in mind. 8 is to 5 is to 4. So, 8 5 and 4. Let's take 8k, 5k and 4k. Doesn't matter. And I'm told that A plus T plus M can complete a job in 4 days. What is 8 plus A plus T plus M? 8 plus 5, 13. 13 plus 4 is 17. Clear? Sorry, it's not in 4 days. If all of them work for 
8 hours a day. So I'm assuming this as the efficiency is per hour. Okay. So total number of hours taken is 4 into 8 that is 32. Clear? Because each day is 8 hours. So 4 days is 32 hours. Right. So I've converted the whole table into hours. So 4 into 8 is 32 and 17k. So my total work gets defined as 32 into 17k. Let's keep it as it is. No problem. However, Anu and Tanu work together for first 6 days. Anu and Tanu together for 6 days will be 8k plus 5k. That is 13k for first 6 days. Now each day they are working for 6 hours and 40 minutes. So 40 minutes is 40 by 60 hours. 40 by 60 hours is 2 by 3. And 6 plus 2 by 3 becomes 18 plus 2 that is 20 by 3. So each day they are working for 20 by 3 hours. Clear? Then the number of hours that Manu will take to complete the remaining job alone. Let us first understand what is the work done by Manu. So this is 3 ones or 3 twos. Or. Clear? Sorry, Anu and Tanu. Right, cool. So 13 into 2 is 26, 26 into 2 is 52, right? So this becomes 13 into 4, that is 520k units. Clear? The acceptable job that all of them can finish in 4 days if all of them work together for 8 hours a day. So this is my total work. Out of that, 520k units are already over. So let's calculate what is 32 into 17. So 17 into 30 is 510. Plus 17 into 2 is 34. So 510 plus 34 becomes 544k is my total work. But out of that 520k is already over. That means Manu is doing how many units? Manu is doing the remaining 24 units. The work done by Manu. And this becomes 544k units. Now the question is asking you these 24k units Manu will do in how many days? Sorry, how many hours? Okay. So each hour Manu is completing 4k units. So number of hours becomes total work divided by efficiency. So K and K gets cancelled. That means Manu alone will complete the remaining work in 6 hours and that becomes our final answer. Okay guys, so let's move to the next question here. This is how we handle efficiency based questions. Now let's look at this question. John takes twice as much time as Jack take to complete the work. Now, the number of days efficiency is given. So, John by Jack. The efficiency of number of days is 2 is to 1. John takes twice. Let's write an N here. So, if, efficiency of, if a number of days is 2 is to 1, we know that efficiency is inversely proportional to number of days. So, the efficiency becomes 1 is to 2. So, John by Jack is 1 is to 2. Clear? Now, uh, Jack takes one third the time taken by Jack and Jim together take one third of the time taken of the time to finish the job than John takes working alone. So I have Jack plus Jim divided by John okay is equal to 1 by 3. If this is the ratio of now if this is the ratio of number of days the ratio of efficiency will be 3 is to 1. So understand, John is 1 here, John is 1 here. So what can I conclude? Let us try to understand this. So we have John, we have Jack and we have Jim. Now I cannot comment about number of days but I can definitely comment about their efficiency. So the ratio of John and Jack is 1 is to 2. And John is already 1. So Jack out of 3 units, if this is 2, that means Jim will be 1 more unit. Only then it will be 3 more units. So therefore, John is to Jack is to Jim is going to be 1 is to, it's going to be 1 is to 2 is to 1. Clear? Now, you know, and let's say K, 2K and K. This K doesn't matter much in most of the questions, but in some questions it does matter, okay? Now, John takes 3 days more than the time taken by all the 3 of them to work together. Let's, let me write all here, okay? So if all of them are taking X days, okay? Now, John is taking 3 days more, x plus 3, to do the same work. So, this total is equal to 4k. Now, total work is same in both the cases. I know that n into r is total work. So, this becomes k into x plus 3 is equal to x into 4k. So, k and k gets cancelled. 
so we have x plus 3 is equal to 4x or we have 3x is equal to 3 or we have x is equal to 1. Clear? So if x is equal to 1, that means my total work gets defined as 4k. I replace x is equal to 1 here. 4k and number of days taken by gym to complete the work. Number of days taken is total work divided by efficiency. So again k and k gets cancelled. So the number of days taken by gym to complete the work will be nothing but total 4 days and that becomes our answer. So this is how I repeat, this is how we handle the efficiency based questions. Right, let's move to the next question please. Now when they work alone, B needs 25% more time to finish the job than A does. Now if you are good at percentages, 25% is 1 by 4. So if, the, if A does the work in 4 days, then B does the work in 5 days. This is the ratio of number of days. So the ratio of their efficiency becomes 5 is to 4. Now they two finish the job in 13 days in the following manner where A does half of the job. And this is a question where the ratios variables are very important. Now let's try to understand what do I have. If ratio of number of days of A and B is 4 is to 5, let me assume this as 4D and 5D because this is the ratio. And the efficiency is 5 is to 4. So let me assume this as 5R and 4R. So I define my total work as N into R. So since both of them are doing the same work, my total work is defined as 20 into D into R. Clear? Now A works alone till half of the job is done. Now 20 DR. So half of the job is 10 DR. So let's talk about number of days. So number of days taken by A becomes 10 DR divided by 5R. So R and R gets cancelled. That is 2D. Plus A and B together work for the remaining 4 days. That is remaining 4 days. And then I am told B alone works and completes the remaining 5% of the job. So remaining 5% of the job becomes 5% of 20 DR. And B's efficiency is divided by 4 R. So 21's are 25's are 5 and 5 gets cancelled. R and R gets cancelled. That means D by 4. Now this total number of days is equal to 30. So we take an LCM here. This becomes 9 D by 4 is equal to 9. 9, 9 gets cancelled. That means the value of D is equal to 4. Clear? In how many days will B alone finish the entire job? Now B alone will finish the entire job in 5D days. And that is going to be 5 into 4. That means B alone will complete the job in 20 days. And that becomes our answer. And I repeat a perfect example of how to handle efficiency based questions. Okay guys, I hope you are able to pick up the way to attack the questions. So whenever ratio is given, preferably use a variable because in certain questions, variables are important. Whereas in certain questions, variables do not play an important role. And that is how we need to start attacking the questions. Right? Now let's look at one more question on efficiency. Now a person can complete a job in 120 days. So let's say a person takes 120 days to complete the job. Nothing is given. Let me assume total was work as 120 units. And it is one unit per day. On day two, he is joined by another person who can complete the work in exactly 120 days. That means again, he is also completing one unit per day. So what is happening in day one? Day one, only one unit is done. Day two, the first guy is working, then one more guy joins. That means two units. Day three, the first guy is working, then one more, second guy is also working, then one more guy joins. And so on and so on and so on. Same efficiency. So what is happening? Day one, one unit. Day two, two units. Day 3, 3 units and so on, so on, so on. Day n, n units are done. This is sum of first n natural numbers. So n into n plus 1 by 2 should be my total work. And as per our assumption, we have assumed total work as 120. Now we have n into n plus 1 is equal to 240. Now whenever you have multiplication of two consecutive numbers, okay? If you observe, this is n square plus n is equal to 240. The best way to approach is assume a perfect square close to 240 and a perfect square close to 240 is 225. So let's assume. So 15 square is 225 plus 15 gives me 240. This is the best way to assume the numbers. 
right so how many days are required to complete the job n days n is equal to 15 so therefore a total of 15 days are required to complete the job this is where again efficiency model comes very handy clear so i repeat target is efficiency read the question carefully and get your answers right now let's get one more question on efficiency model so one day rahul started a work at 9 am and gautam joined him two hours later then they worked together and completed the work at 5 pm that means rahul worked for how many hours guys from 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock that is 8 hours let's assume efficiency of rahul per hour is r units and in 8 hours he has completed 8 r units clear so that is the work done by rahul in 8 hours right but gautam joined him 2 hours later if gautam joined him 2 hours later that means gautam would have completed the work in 6 hours clear that means that becomes plus 6 g assuming gautam's efficiency is g so in 6 hours he would have done 6 g clear right if both of them had started at 9 am then the work would have completed in 30 minutes earlier that means now rahul is working for 7.5 hours so that becomes 7.5 plus r and Gautam is also working for 7.5 hours. That becomes 7.5 G. Now, this is my total work efficiency into number of days. Clear? Okay, this is equal to total work. If I equate, I get the ratio of their efficiencies. Let's see if I transpose my values. I get 0 0.5 R is equal to 1.5 G. Or eventually, I get R by G is equal to 3 is to That becomes the ratio of R is to G. Now, if R is to G is 3 is to 1, we can, can we also calculate a total work? Let's calculate. That becomes 8 into 3K plus 6 into K. That means my total work gets defined as 30K units. Is our total work. Okay, we can replace in any one of the equations. We'll get 30 units only. Now, working alone, Rahul would have taken... How many hours to complete the work? So, 30k units Rahul completes alone at his efficiency of 3k. That means the total number of days taken if Rahul alone would have completed the work is going to be how many days? That is 10 days and that becomes our required answer. Again, a perfect case where number of days is not given. People are working for a different number of hours. Assume efficiencies, calculate the ratio and get your required answer. Okay guys, let's look at the next question. At their usual efficiency levels, A and B together finish a task in 12 days. Okay. Now, if A had worked at half as efficiently as she does. Okay. So, let me assume A's efficiency as 2A. Because I am told half, right? So, half will be A. And B's efficiency as B only. This is the work done in one hour or one day. So, in 12 days, they are doing 12 into this and if a had worked at half the efficiency and b had worked for thrice the efficiency the task would have been completed in how many days together in one day they are doing this much so in nine days they'll do this much and this becomes our total work so this is three threes are three fours are so when we multiply this becomes four twos are eight a plus four b is equal to three a plus twenty seven b Sorry, uh, 3 into 3, that is 9B. So, what do we get here? We get 5A is equal to 5B or I get A is equal to B. So, if I replace B as A here, 2A plus A. So, if uh, I can write this as 2A plus A into 12. That means my total work becomes 36A. Now, how long would A complete if she is working alone at her usual efficiency? Now, do not forget, we have assumed usual efficiency as 12 days. And number of days is nothing but total work divided by efficiency, that is 2A. So, 36A by 2A becomes 2, 18 is 36. So, A will complete the work at her usual efficiency in 18 days. So, I repeat guys, I hope you are able to pick up a hang of these models. Time and work is not a difficult chapter at all. We can easily pace it up and get our required answers. Clear? Let's move to the next question. Now, Ramesh and Ganesh can together complete a work in 16 days. 
After seven days of working together, Ramesh got sick and his efficiency fell by 30%. As a result, they completed the work in 17 days instead of 16 days. Clear? So, if they are working at usual efficiency, let's say this is R and this is G per day, they are completing the work in 16 days. Right? Now, Ramesh, after 7 days of working together, now the same work is done by 7 days of working together at usual efficiency. Right? Ramesh got sick and his efficiency fell by 30%. That means now Ramesh is working at only 70% of his efficiency. And there's nothing told about Ganesh. That means Ganesh is working at his usual efficiency. And uh, the work is completed in 17 days. So, first 7 days, that means the remaining 10 days the work has been carried out for. So, let's simplify. This becomes 16R plus 16G is my total work, which is 7R plus 7G. Again, we get 7R plus 10G. So, what do we have here? We have 16R plus 16G is equal to 14R plus 17G. So, if we simplify, we get 2R is equal to G or let's simplify this as R by G is equal to 1 is to 2. Okay guys, so R by G is equal to nothing but 1 is to 2 given in this question. Right? So, can we define our total work? So, I can replace R as K and G as 2K. So, my total work gets defined as 16 into K plus 2K which is going to be 48K units. I am asked that if Ganesh had worked alone after Ramesh got sick. Okay? Now, so, after Ramesh got sick, that means for 7 days he did not fall sick. So, in 7 days the work done is 7 into K plus 2K. That becomes 21K. So, how much is left over? The left over part is going to be uh, 27K. Clear? Now, if Ganesh would have worked alone after this, that means if Ganesh would have done 27K units alone, then how many days would he have taken? Now, number of days is nothing but total work divided by the efficiency. So, K and K gets cancelled. 27 by 2 is going to give us how much guys? 13.5 days. We have 13.5 in the option and that is going to be our required answer. That is 13.5 days. They will complete the work. Okay guys, now the last model that we are talking about, so last but one model we are talking about is a man days where I am given more than one work is completed like 7 men, 10 men and so on, so on, so on. So the simple funda that we use in man days is number of men into number of days into number of hours into efficiency divided by work done is equal to M2, D2, H2, R2 by W2. W1 and W2 are the work done, okay? And R1 and R2 will come into play if I'm talking about men and women. So, efficiency changes there, right? So, this becomes the standard model of Mandy's and the questions in Mandy's model are very easy. Let's look at them and let's also understand this model. So, a group of N people completed a project. They finished 35% of the project working for 7 hours a day, working for 10 days. So, how many people are working for M1 into D1 into R1. Now remember, when I am talking about the same people or same category, then the efficiency doesn't matter here. Let me assume they are working, they are completing R units per day. And they have completed how much work guys? 35% of the total work. So this is the amount of work done. Now after this 10 people completed the, after this 10 people left the group. That means now how many people are working on the remaining project? That is N minus 10. They are working for 14 days, for 10 hours a day. Since the question is not commenting about the efficiency, the efficiency remains same. This is how we handle this model. And they want to complete the remaining work. If 35% of work is done, then the remaining work becomes 65% of the total work. So this 100, this 100 gets cancelled. Total work, total work gets cancelled. This is 5 7 and this is 5 13 -za. From here, R and R gets cancelled. 10 and 10 gets cancelled. 7 1s are 7 2s are. So let's cross multiply. So this becomes 13n 
is equal to 7 2 is a 14 into n minus 10. So eventually we have 13 n is equal to 14 n minus 140. Or finally we get the value of n is equal to 140. So initially how many people were there? 140 and the question is asking us the value of n and therefore the answer here becomes 140 becomes a final answer. So very easy question on time and work. It's a standard model on Mondays. We should be able to get the answers easily. Let's look at a few more questions here. Now three men and eight machines. Since I do not know the efficiency of a man, let me assume efficiency of a man is M or X because I have machines also. Let us take it as X. Okay. So efficiency of a man is X and uh, efficiency of a machine is Y. So let's say three men and eight machines can finish the job. Clear? In half the time taken by three men and eight machines to complete the work. Half the time taken, let me assume uh, the time taken here is 2D days. Three machines and eight men. And let's say half the time becomes D days. So this D and this D gets cancelled. Clear? So what do we have here? We have 3x plus 8y is equal to 6y plus 16x. Or we have 2y is equal to 13x. Or we have x by y is equal to 2 by 13. This is the ratio of efficiencies that we get. If two machines finish the job in 13 days, that means two machines. And the efficiency of a machine is Y, let's say 13K. And they finish the job in 13 days. This is my total work. Then how many men are required to finish the job in 13 days? So we can apply. This is my total work. Is equal to how many men? I do not know. Let's say M men. Each man is doing 2k units per day and they are completing the work in how many days? 13 days. So k and k gets cancelled, 13 and 13 gets cancelled, 2 and 2 gets cancelled. That means the value of m is equal to 13. That means 13 men are required to complete the job in 13 days, which two machines can complete in 13 days. Okay guys, very simple question and this is how we get our answer. I repeat a typo mistake, this is an X. Clear? So this is how we handle man day's job. Now let's understand this question. A, con a contractor agreed to construct a 6 km day road in 2 days. He employed 140 persons and after 60 days, he realized that only 1.5 kilometers have been done. So 140 into 60 into let's say efficiency is R. They are able to complete how much of the work? Only 1.5 kilometers of the work. How many additional men? Let me assume that X additional men are required. So this is number of men. Would be deployed to complete the work in time. So I have 200 days. Out of 260 is done. That means I have 140 days. The genders are same. So efficiency remains the same. And that would do the fin to remaining work. If 6 kilometers is the total work. Out of that only 1.5 is done. So 6 minus 1.5, this becomes 4.5. So 140, 140 gets cancelled, 15 ones are 15 threes are, R and R also gets cancelled. So when we cross multiply, we get 180 is equal to 140 plus X or we get the value of X is equal to 40. That means additional 40 men are required to complete the job exactly on time as per the given conditions in the question. Right guys, now let's look at another question. I hope you are able to pick up the time and work, the man days model. These are the only type of questions which have been coming up in CAT. It's a very easy chapter. You spend good 4 to 5 hours, solve like 50 to 60 questions and you should be able to safeguard your marks in the examination. Right? Now let's look at this question. So humans and robots can perform a job but at different efficiencies. So let's say efficiency of a human is H and efficiency of a robot is R. 15 humans and 5 robots can together complete the work in 30 days. This is my total work. Whereas 5 humans and 15 robots can together take 60 days to complete the work. Now this is my total work. So let's simplify. This is 1s are, this is 2s are. So this becomes 15h plus 5r is equal to 2 5s are 10h plus 2 15s are 30 R. 
so we get 5h is equal to 25r or we eventually get h by r is equal to 5 is to 1. Let's say human is doing 5k units and a robot is doing k units. So if I replace here, my total work becomes 15 into 5k plus 5 into k multiplied by 30. Let's keep it as it is. 15 plus 15 by 75, 75 plus 5 is 80. That is 80k into 30. This is my total work. Now, how many days will 15 humans working together without any robot, right? So, I have 15 humans. That means, again, 15 into 5k. I do not know how many days will they take to complete the work. So, k and k gets cancelled. This is uh, 5 ones are 5 sixteens are. This is 15 ones are 15 twos are. So, number of days taken will be 16 twos are. That is 32 days are required by 15 humans without any robot to complete the remaining work clear and 32 is there in one of the options and that's become that becomes our final answer okay guys so that's it about a mandates model now the last model we are talking about is pipes and cisterns it is as same as human beings doing the work only thing is sometimes there is a leak tap and leak tap it comes with negative efficiency So, leak tap comes with a negative efficiency and that is how we have to deal with it. So, instead of uh, R, we write it as a minus R. So, let's look at three to four questions which have been coming up from this model as well. So, tank has an inlet pipe and an outlet pipe. So, outlet pipe is coming with negative efficiency. Okay. So, if the outlet pipe is closed, then the inlet pipe can fill the empty tank in eight hours. So, inlet pipe can complete the tank in eight hours alone. Okay. Now, if outlet pipe is open, then inlet pipe fills the empty tank in 10 hours. That means if the outlet pipe is open, so inlet pipe plus outlet pipe, both of them are working together and they complete the tank in 4 hours, uh, 10 hours. Now, let's take, let's take the LCM 8 and 10. The LCM is 40 units. So, this is 5 and this is 4. Now, as I told you, outlet pipe comes with a negative efficiency. So, 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. As I told you, our target should be efficiency always, right? So, if only outlet pipe is open, in how many hours, the full tank becomes half full. So, from 40 units, it should leak out 20 units, right? So, 20 units will be leak out, leaked out in 20 by 1. That is going to be in 20 hours, the outlet pipe will be able to make the tank half full from being full. Clear? Now, let's look at this question. Two pipes A and B are attached to a water tank. Pipe A fills the tank while pipe B drains it. Fair enough. Pipe A fills the tank while pipe B drains it. If pipe A is opened at 2 p.m. and pipe B is opened at 3 p.m., then the tank gets filled in 10 p.m. So, let me assume the efficiency of B uh, outlet pipe is minus B and efficiency of inlet pipe is A. So, from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. is 8 hours minus this is 7 hours. So, 8 into A becomes the efficiency in 8 hours minus 7 into B is the amount of water that is leaked out. This becomes my total work. Instead, if pipe A is opened at 8, 2 p.m. and pipe B is opened at 4 p.m., the tank becomes full in 6 p.m. This is again an efficiency model. So, 4 hours of pipe A minus 2 hours of pipe B. So, when we simplify, what do we get? We get 4A is equal to 5B or we get A by B is equal to 5 by 4. So let's replace here. So if I take 5k, 4 into 5k becomes 20k, minus 2 into 4k becomes 8k. 20 minus 8 will give me 12k becomes the total work. Right? Now, if pipe B is not opened at all, then in minutes, how much time will pipe A take to complete the work? Right? So 12k divided by 5k. That means it will take how many hours? 2.4 hours. Now, 2 hours is 120 minutes and 0.4 hours is 0.4 into 60, that is 24 more minutes. So, therefore, the total time taken to fill the tank will here be 144 minutes in this case and that is going to be our required answer. Okay, guys. So, let's look at last two questions before we complete the session. Now, tank is fitted with pipes. Some are filling where the rest are draining it. All the filling pipes fill at the same rate whereas all the draining pipes drain at the same rate. Okay. The empty tank gets filled in 6 hours when 6 filling pipes. Let's assume each filling pipe is filling at F per hour. 
six filling pipes will fill six F, and five draining pipes will drain out minus five D, and my total work is defined as this part. But this time becomes sixty hours when five filling taps and six draining taps are working. Now let's equate them. Six ones are six tens are. So we have six F minus five D. Is equal to ten fives of fifty F minus sixty D. So this becomes fifty five D is equal to forty four F, or I get F by D is equal to five by four. So that we can write it as five K and four K. So what is my total work? My total work here becomes six into six into five K minus five into four K. So six fives are thirty. Thirty minus twenty is ten. 10 into 6 gives me 60k as my total units of work. In how many hours will the empty tank be full if one draining tap and two filling taps are working? Okay, so 60k units. I do not know how many hours. One draining tap and two filling taps. Two filling taps will give me 2 into 5k. One draining tap will give me 1 into 4k. So 10 minus 4 will give you 6. So this becomes 60k is equal to n into 6k. K and k gets cancelled, or the value of n becomes 10. So therefore, how many hours? It will take 10 hours for one draining tap and two filling taps to complete the tank. Clear? Now the last question on the time and work of last five years is: a tank gets emptied at a fixed point every day. Okay, immediately thereafter, either pump A or pump B or both of them start working until the tank is full. Okay, on Monday A alone fills the tank at 8 p.m. So I do not know at what time did it start. Suppose it started at 2 p.m. Right? It's fixed. Emptied at 2 p.m. If it is emptied at 2 p.m., then tap A alone fills at 8 p.m. That means tap A is working for six hours. I do not know that, right? So let me assume 8 p.m. as 20 hours, 20 hundred hours, right? So 20 hundred hours minus let's say x hundred hours. This is the time for which A is filling. Let's say efficiency of A is A. Clear? Now this is the total tank's capacity that becomes total work. Now on Tuesday B alone worked. B complete the filling the tank at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. is 1800 hours minus x hours again because at this fixed time every day it's getting emptied. So B into 18 minus 6. Now this is equal to on Wednesday A worked alone for 5 p.m. So A worked alone for 1700 hours minus x hours and B alone worked for 2 hours only. That is B into clear. Right, so let's equate first and third statement. Let's see what do we get because I have minus a x, I have minus a x here. So I get twenty a minus a x is equal to seventeen a minus a x plus two b. So this is this a strategic part that you'll have to apply. So what do we get from here? Smartly, we get three a is equal to two b, or we get a by b is equal to two by. Yeah, so we get a by b is equal to two by three. At what time was the tank filled on Thursday if both pumps were used simultaneously all along? Now let's replace two and three and first get the value of x. Okay, so I replace a as two k, so I get two k into twenty minus x is equal to three k into eighteen minus x. So this we get it as forty k, or k and k gets cancelled. So 40 minus 2x is equal to 54 minus 3x, or we get the value of x is equal to 14. That means at 1400 hours, the tank is usually empty. That means A is working for how many hours? Six hours. Now let's redefine. So my total work becomes A is working for six hours. That means my total work gets defined for 12k units. Now, at what time is the tank filled if both of them are worked simultaneously? So, 12k divided by uh, 2k plus 3k that is 5k. Again, 2.4 hours. 2.4 hours is going to be 2 hours and 0.4 hours. 0.4 hours is 0.4 into 60. That is 144 minutes. Now, 144 minutes after 
fourteen hundred hours. That means after two p.m. So two p.m. and this is two hours and one uh, twenty plus twenty four minutes. So two p.m. plus two hours and twenty four minutes gives us four hours and twenty four minutes becomes our final answer. Again, a very interesting question. And this completes our all the last year models of time and work. So I repeat, go back, solve the questions once again. And I hope this video helped you guys to understand the models and also understand how do you apply the strategy in the exam and get your final answer. Thank you. All the best.